Okay, a little recap. Been out here since pre-dawn. Oh boy. That's right, I'm just watching this Merlin. What's he doing? Huh. Went right back to the same same tree I already photographed him on. Um, there's a belted kingfisher flapping around. No shorebirds yet, but this Merlin doesn't care about anything. I'm right under his tree. They're so small. There are a lot of birds out here today. Although, I'm not seeing the birds that I came for. I wanted some shore birds. I got some really cool uh, pre-dawn shots. I think the lens and the kit did really well. So what we're working with here. So but behind me, the sun's rising and that's where most of the birds are. You can hear them a bunch of Canadian geese. I'm gonna try a few more pictures of this Merlin because it's the only cool bird I've seen so far. Although it looks like some stuff might be waking up. Maybe I got worried too soon. He's looking right at me, so let's see what we can get. So, as per usual, I'm a little scattered. I'm not really sure what I'm, what I'm after here this morning. Or I should say, I know what I want, but so far I don't seem like I'm getting it. So I'm trying to pivot the beach I want to shoot. I can see there's already people out there with a dog. So I'm not uh, super optimistic. Those little shorbs are going to be over there. Even though that's where the perfect light will be. You can see, so as the sun rises, the west beach is getting lit very nicely but I still don't see any birds over there the trouble is I think dogs will come in soon on this beach too they always do so I don't know I might I might pivot and just keep on this Merlin trouble with him is he's up pretty tall I don't feel super great about being able to track him moving the camera can do it for sure but I don't think I can he, he's at a weird angle and there's a lot of foliage so but it might be better than nothing. It's starting to warm up, so. Ooh. Sun flare. 
while I decide what to do, let's see if our friend is still in the tree. This Merlin, he is still here. So maybe we'll reposition and see if we can get something there. I traveled light today. I have the XH2S with the 150 to 600, my Peak Design strap. My only gripe with this is I wish uh, when I spin, if I want the foot on the top or the bottom, the strap spins. I wish the pins were somewhere else, but oh well, minor quibble. And I just brought the eye footage, uh, the Cobra. I have the aluminum one. Carbon fiber really doesn't, doesn't drop a bunch of weight. I didn't need carbon fiber for this. Ah, there's some shorebirds though. I just saw fly. I don't know if you can see them. I don't know where they're going. Let's see if we can find where they're going. I don't think they're going to go out to, to Dog Beach here, though. Hmm. Oh, I lost them, but I think I do see a shorebird. All right, let's check. Shorb confirmed. I don't know what it is. They all look exactly the same. My friend group keeps telling me they're different species. I think that's a lie. But I'm trying to play the odds here. I literally only see one, but I did see a couple fly in. And while there is a dog on this beach, and it is Sunday morning and it is wonderful. I think the birds are gonna contend with the beach anyway. So maybe if I stay far back enough, Maybe if these people see me shooting, they'll chill. Their dog does seem pretty relaxed, so I don't think he's gonna go, go nutters. Got a turn flying. Alrighty, this is good. So I'm trying to play the odds here. There's more birds to my right, but the light at this point, there's the kingfisher. He's a waste of time. Probably the same kingfisher who always lives here. He's very skittish as they all are, as a rabbit. Sometimes there's foxes here and there's snowy owls every winter. There's common tern, a bunch of grackles. Uh, but anyway, so the light, I'm trying to, uh, to rationalize the light. I don't, if I go over there at best, I'll get some side light but I don't, I don't think that's gonna work. So let's see if we can get this one bird here in good light versus maybe more birds, but bad light. Alrighty, we got some sort of shorb. The dogs didn't scare them. I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm not laying in this stuff. No way. I think I can get something good enough from here. It's still wet, but I have my limits. At least we found one shorebird. I don't know what it is. I got some small in frame pictures I'll look at later. It looks like he he's going back and forth, but I think he might be working his way back down this way. So fingers crossed. All these stupid grackles right behind me. Okay, so he's working his way over. I've got two quick gear thoughts. The first, this is why the Cobra is so cool just a little quick release. The only option, I, I usually use this with a gimbal, but the gimbal was heavy and I didn't want to bring it. I don't think I needed it. So the only trouble is when I had that on there, like for the Merlin, I couldn't get up. I couldn't get it at an angle tight enough because the th this head is just like screwed right on to the plate. So if you don't have a ball head or something in between, you can't tilt the angle of the camera. But here, it's right on a ball head attached to the quick release. So this is great, quick to lock down. It's not as smooth as like a video head, but I don't really need it. I can kind of control it by hand. And uh, another thing, some people have complained on the X-H2S that when you press this little record button here, that it doesn't shoot in manual. But for me, I really like that because you can shoot, see right now I'm shooting at shutter 400 and ISO 6, 640. But when I hit record, it's going to 24 frames per second and it's automatically giving me the 180 shutter degree rule. So it's putting me to shutter 48, which is great. 
uh, but then my ISO would be screwed. So when I do that, it automatic, as soon as I hit that record button, it's automatically changing. Oh, there's that Merlin again. It's automatically changing my shutter to be what I need it to be. And then it's matching the ISO, which I really like. If you want to shoot manual, just like go to manual. I don't, I don't really see the use case for shooting stills. Your, your video exposure will never, ever, ever be the same. Um, as your photo exposure. And I think I was wrong earlier. I think I thought it was doing the same exposure. And actually, no, I guess I'm not wrong. It is doing the same exposure, but it's basically, it's exposing correctly, but with automatic settings when you hit that auto video button, which I'm really liking because right now I'm focused on stills. I'm not focused on video with this bird. I want to get some stills, but, uh, I want some video, he's a little bit too far for stills. And this is a good example where stills and video have a lot of differences because right now the stills aren't fantastic and I've gotten everything I can, but getting some cool video is nice. So I'm gonna try to army crawl. I do kind of wish I had a, a frying pan would be easier to push. I'm gonna have to pick this up. I'm gonna get soaked crawling through this stuff. It's really mucky, but see if we can get closer. He doesn't seem to be making much, much move either way. things that are easy and presented to me. Uh, this guy, I don't know where he is. Somewhere, somewhere right, right there. He, he's not making up his mind. He's not going one way or the other. If, if he was like working his way down the beach, I'd go get in front of him. There is someone walking at the other end that might push him back down towards me. But the sun, I don't know if you can tell, the sun is also hidden behind clouds. So, I think I've made my decision. Ugh. I'm gonna hop back to the other side because if anything has shown up, that might be the place to shoot them. We'll see. Gosh, I'd lo love to get that Kingfisher. But what are you gonna do? What's this? We got gulls, gulls. Can't see it. I don't know. All right. Yeah, we're gonna bounce back. Of course, <laughs> in a turn of events, my birds are all gone from over here, too. Now, as you're watching my videos, and thank you to all of the new subscribers here, keep in mind I know nothing about the species that I am chasing. So, a book or something would probably be wise. But I'm just looking up and down the beach. There's still something over there, but they were goslings last I looked and I think they still are. Nothing, 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 nothing. Which is a shame because the light is suddenly quite pleasant. So all the birds that were up on shore when I came in this morning, have, a lot of geese flew out. Maybe they were just resting the night and then they've moved on. And you can see everything else has moved out, but I mean, it's way too far to shoot, so. Let's see what other plans we can make here. It is just after seven in the morning now. Oh, ho, ho, ho. it appears I was incorrect. What were goslings this morning now do appear to be some type of shorb. Shorblers, I call them. 
because this is about as much fun as chasing warblers, but dirtier. But I'm pretty sure, yeah, these are some little plovers or something. Now, everyone who's given me advice tells me to wait and let them walk to me. I'm gonna try to get a little closer and then see if they still do that. But there's probably a limit to how close I can get before they stop coming this way. But I guess what I'm hoping for is they're over by the boat launch. So I think they have to be a little more tolerant over there. I'm hoping they don't just fly away. But if anything, I represent calm and peace on this beach now. Not like those noisy motors. I also don't really see why people vlog with cameras. Like, I mean, I'm gonna get all my nice footage of keeper stuff on my phone, but like, do you really need to see me through F-Log right now? My phone looks pretty good. This is just talking. You're not here for, maybe you're here for the talking. I should get a mic for the, the iPhone. Maybe that's, maybe I'll order one today, but okay. Okay, we're getting close. These are not goslings. I have found shorebirds. Let's do this. We're, we're taking a little safety video in case I totally spook them. I came here for a legion of shorebirds and I found what, these five? That's it, these five plus the other one. Soaked, dirty, sandy, muddy, and a runner scared my birds. So, I think that's how it's supposed to go from what I hear. Look at these guys. Let's see if we can get an image quality shot off these. All right, we are here at the marsh. One thing I'm looking forward to is there is no sand here lots of shoreline and it's all rock and then there's a, a marsh on the other side of it so I don't expect to get too much dirtier also every time I sit here I get bit by ants so I'm gonna shut off the video for a bit and turn on Merlin because you do get songbirds I hear chickadees but I'm gonna see what's in here I'll say that about this place so far, I don't see any shorebirds, but the waders, the herons, and egrets are, you can set your watch to the birds at this marsh there, all over the place. Oh, <laughs> don't mind me. <laughs> Just talking to my phone. Uh, this is like Heron Central. Got a feeding egret, feeding great blue heron. Can't see him, there's a green heron just standing in the reeds there. 
pretty good. Not bad. I wasn't even going to come out today. So far, going pretty well. Kingfishers are super active. I would still love a detailed perch shot, but I'm not holding my breath for that. But I did get a flight shot. It's not the best flight shot. But it's something. I haven't seen nearly as much swallow activity here as I have in recent years. So I'll leave them to better skilled folks. I got a good spot there. It was like hidden under the canopy. I'm not sure if the kingfishers knew I was there, but I am on a shorebird mission, so I'm going to at least scout and see if there are any shorebirds here at all before I pivot. Oh, look at this guy. A little woodpecker right here. So I've walked a bit farther than I planned. Birding with a mobility impairment means you gotta know your limits. I think I am close to those today, but got down low for a rabbit that is quite tame, about six feet away. Although this place is fire ant, red ant, I'm not sure the difference, but there are lots. Even just walking I'm a few hundred yards away from where they normally get me. I don't plan on staying Grant down too long. Merlin's here and lots of cool stuff. Cedar wax wings, I saw those. Have yet to get a picture, but on the way back, we'll see. I heard there were some shorebirds. I hear a car, which means maybe you can drive over this way too and not have to walk. But also, Merlin heard a black and white warbler. And uh, these guys I ran into said there's a bunch down here. So we'll see. I don't want to go too much further. I want to see an owl or something. That'd be cool. All right. All right, so some friends and I, we have a little uh, photo club and our contest right now is harsh light and this works, but uh, I didn't even think to come here for shorebirds. I come to this marsh all the time, but I've never actually come this far down. This is fantastic. Um, I'm gonna have to come back here either tomorrow morning or the next when the light's actually early. It's a bit of a walk for me, but I didn't realize you can actually park right beside here at the other end of the marsh, which is awesome. So. These little guys, I would, this would be a lot better if I had any idea what I was looking at, but um, these little guys are right here and I think this is gonna be powerful. Not a lot of walkers here either. It's funny, you don't know what a spot's gonna be like until you just go a little bit farther. But this, uh, this creek washes right out to the Great Lake. Here's where all the bird, shorebirds are. This is a big find. It's not a secret, I just didn't know about it. But we're gonna start the walk home, but I think this is gonna be real productive in the next couple weeks. Uh, one thing I will say, camera's been buggy as hell today. I've had to battery pull five or six times. There's been a couple of times when, uh, when I just wouldn't record. So it's been tricky for sure on that regard. Although it turns on fast, so I haven't really missed much, but it's still annoying. You know, it's a funny thing. What we got there, get the RF. RF 800 in the in the flesh. 10 o'clock's a good time to come out. 
snarkiness aside, um, I do wonder, you know, it's funny, a lot of the people who argue about gear, um, I just, I wonder what they're, they're doing with gear. I've been out since five o'clock in the morning. It's just about 10 and I didn't see any other photographers until the last 20 minutes. And we're in August. I mean, the sun, well, you saw the video is early on. The sun was, was up since six. It was strong over the horizon by seven. Um, so, I mean, I've been, I've been shooting purposely today, trying to get some harsh light for, for a contest with some friends. But, um, you know, now that I, I've found this location, I'll definitely be back at dawn again this week. Uh, and I expect again, I'll probably have it all to myself. It's amazing. I just saw, saw, I think two or three people with, uh, my favorite lens to hate the RF 100 to 500. That's funny. Anybody telling me the Fuji needs good light to shoot, I guess. I guess your $4,000 RF 1 to 5 does too, because it seems the people who buy that lens only come out when the sun's up. Oh. <laughs> but uh, anyway, this location is, is so good. It's, uh, it's interesting. So I was talking again to a, uh, a friend. We, we, I started uh, <laughs> randomly. I think community is so important in uh, most hobbies, but especially birding. And uh, I don't know, maybe six months ago, something like that. I was talking to a good friend of mine, dude with a Fuji, Mr. Matt Parrish, and we talk about shooting all the time, every day. And um, we were talking and we both followed a lot of the same people, local shooters from Ontario. And we, you know, maybe one of us would talk to some people and someone else talked to other people. And one day I suggested that, I thought, well, what if, what if we had a group chat or something, like a functional group chat of people that we like, and instead of everybody sliding into each other's DMs once in a while to, to give a high five virtually. So what if we were able to actually talk and share ideas? And um, I have I have little shame, so I decided to just message a bunch of uh, bunch of grown men and ask for their phone number. And uh, so far, I think I'm, I'm like 10 for 10. I don't think anybody said no. But this group has been awesome, and now uh, people are starting to shoot up, uh, or <laughs> not shoot up, People are starting to shoot together who who might not have known each other in the past, which is awesome. I live a little far, so I haven't met most folks, but we're starting to do our podcasts and all that cool stuff. So this morning, um, rather than be out on my own and totally lost, I was messaging uh, this group, which has been such a great resource for knowledge and uh, learning kind of on the go about shorebird photography and, and how the birds may act and some things I might want to do. And I found that super, super helpful. Um, one thing that I think I took for granted is when I got there at five something in the morning, I kind of expected to see them. I, I thought it'd be too low to shoot, but I thought I'd be able to see where they were and position myself till the light was ready. And then I was quickly informed that no, they, they're probably roosting in trees or in the grass. Like they're not sleeping on the water like Canada geese. So you learn something every day. So a, a friend was messaging and he said, uh, he said, you know, there's this marsh, uh, or he was looking on eBird and it looked like it would be cool for shorebirds. And it happens to be the marsh I go to all the time. If you've seen my Green Heron documentary, uh, if I remember, I'll link it here. Uh, really, really good uh, place for herons, egrets, as I'm sure I showed in the video earlier. Um, so that was, that was great, but I had never thought about this place for warblers or shorebirds or anything like that. And uh, I guess he was seeing reports on eBird. I don't often check. So I decided to keep walking and I couldn't find anything. I went over to check shorebirds. I didn't find anything, but I, I got a lot of nice shooting done, I think. And um, then as I was walking, I saw these two old guys on the trail um, and I talked to them and they were, uh, you know, they looked like they knew what they were doing with spotting and such. And uh, I started talking to them and asked about shorebirds and they said, yeah, you just have to go further down, uh, go down to the, the creek. So I keep walking and I find the creek and what do you know, there's this, this stunning little mud flat where the creek opens up into the Great Lake. And uh, yeah, shorebirds galore, lots of them. And they were right about the warbler too. And on the way back, one of the guys was still there and, and he was mostly just observing. He wasn't even taking pictures. Uh, but he told me he'd seen as many as uh, 17 warbler species in one day at this place. So I would say that's that's pretty hot. So I got some warbler pictures today. That's not what I was after. Um, I don't know if any of them are actually good. The light was kind of strong at that point. But um, 
yeah, all in all, successful day. I would say gear-wise, I think I made the right choice. I I may not have minded a ball head on uh, on top of my um, on top of my monopod for a little bit more flexibility, but I think even with what I had, I, I do think it sufficed, and uh, I would shoot like that again. It's alright. There's someone in front of me who's decided speed limits are optional on the slow side. There he is, trying to go Tim Hortons. See, it's the scourge of Canada. Yeah, so the Warblers. So um, so I got some shots of those. I don't know how, how they'll turn out, but gear-wise, um, yeah, I think a big thing for me is deciding what I'm gonna be doing. So I just bought the K7 tripod and the head, and I love it, but there are times when it doesn't make sense. Today, I knew I'd be hiking. It's not, it's not super heavy, but I mean, I would carry it if I knew where I was going. But if I don't know where I'm going and I don't know what I'm gonna shoot, then I'd rather just bring the monopod. I use the monopod as a walking stick anyway uh, to give myself some stability for bad knee and things like that. So I'm gonna have a monopod anyway. The iFootage Cobra is super, super sturdy. I really do trust it. I'm a big, heavy guy and I still trust it, um, you know, to, to support myself uh, if I need to like walk over uneven terrain. And as I showed earlier, uh, the foot pops off, which is amazing. And I use that a lot today. I think I said earlier that I wish I had a, a frying pan, uh, like a ground pod which I do have one, but I don't have a good way to carry it. I guess I could drill a hole for like a carabiner on my belt or something, but I haven't done that. So it's kind of annoying. I have to carry it in my hands and I didn't want to do that. So it's, uh, I didn't bring it, but the ground tripod was really good. It worked really, really well. I have no complaints at all about that after having used it. Uh, like I said earlier, the Fuji was super, super glitchy today. I don't think it really cost me any shots. Um, the ISO dial everyone's complaining about did it cost me shots? Probably not, but would it maybe, maybe have helped me get a shot? Mm, I don't know. I So for example, I was shooting, uh, as I was walking out, I, I would kind of set up to shoot perch birds, and all of a sudden I looked up and saw the kingfisher, um, and I saw him uh, start to kettle or whatever it's called, you know, hovering and ready for a dive. And I got on him. I don't know. I guess I'll show the pictures. I don't know if any of them are sharp, but they were super underexposed because I had my ISO at 160. And I am still finding it awkward to get a finger on the button and then spin the ISO dial. Um, so in a case like that, it would have been nice to do it, um, uh, do it uh, with one hand. But I still digress and still say the PASM dial kicks total butt and I use it all the time. And for everyone saying they'd rather have ISO on that dial, that's fine. This is not the camera for you, but I still don't think that would have helped me today because for me to support the lens, for me to take a hand off the lens and then turn that left dial, that going to take longer than me pushing a button and spinning it with my right thumb. So the only thing I want them to do is take away the need to push the stupid button. It doesn't make any sense to me. Let me keep aperture on my lens ring, which it's already there. Shutter speed on my front control dial, ISO on my back dial. That's how the R5 was set up. That's how my Olympus was set up. Um, there's no need to push ISO first from what I can tell. I, I don't think it makes any sense. So I still have some complaints uh, about the Fuji. I tested some more video autofocus today and it went pretty well. Uh, the autofocus only choked up the one time, shooting like almost directly into the sun, very low to the ground with a shorebird with pretty low contrast. It was tricky. I was definitely getting frustrated. Uh, and I tried a bunch of different modes, spot. I even tried no subject detection. And even that, it was still like, what are you trying to shoot? So that was a tough condition. Um, it's not something I plan on shooting like that very often, but, uh, but yeah, all in all, this was a really good day. And I think it goes to show you don't know what you're gonna get when you go out. I really wanted to get up and shoot loons, but uh, my partner in crime didn't have time to drive out to the lake I was looking at today. And, and I do paddle on my own sometimes, but um, I'm not really worried about safety. I do take a lot of precautions one way or the other, but I, it's more fun with someone else. I like to go and, and hang out. And the boat is a fair bit of work, especially in the morning if it's kind of cold and you gotta like step in the water. Um, so I've done a lot of kayak shooting lately and I haven't really done much else. And my thought process was I might be able to go step up my game. I would like to get some better loon stills before the end of the year, but I also think I've still got a lot of time. I don't think the loons are gonna be gone for at least six weeks. Um, and I don't think I'm gonna, knowing the birds as I know them now, I don't think I'm gonna need that much more time to get the shot that I'm kind of hoping for and from an image quality perspective. Uh, I'm still kind of trying to cook up in my head what my dream loon shot is. Um, 
I really, I still don't really know what I want to accomplish with that. So we'll see there. I have to, once I think of the shot, then I can get it. I missed an amazing Kingfisher shot today. I was just walking and I, and the, the rocky outcrop on the pier, there happened to be a gap between two rocks. And all of a sudden I look and there's a belt of Kingfisher sitting right between the gap. Um, but I mean, miss is a strong word. I didn't even get a chance to get the camera up to my face and he flew. I was going to try to get a safety shot between the rocks and then I was going to see if I could actually like lay down and get a better perspective shot, but I didn't even get the safety. He was gone right away. So you win some, you lose some, but, uh, overall, yeah, this was a big success. I didn't, I didn't know if I was going to get out. If I got out at all, I was thinking maybe even I'd go sit at my blind this morning. I was thinking about going to another marsh, but the trouble with the other marsh, uh, it has a lot of birds, but so far in my experience it's tough to shoot because um it's kind of it's kind of sloped so the marsh sits low and there's a lot of vegetation and brush between you and the marsh so you can usually get a sight line over the brush but if you don't want to be shooting down onto the bird if you want to get a good perspective i i haven't i don't know how many photographers go to this marsh but i i haven't really seen much and i haven't seen any good photos out of the marsh even though there's a lot of cool species so it might be a cool place for video because there is a there is a viewing platform so if i'm less concerned about the angle for video and more concerned about species in action then it looks like a good spot to just set up the tripod and, you know, sit and drink a chalky milk. And, uh, actually, no, I wouldn't drink chalky milk, chocolate milk. I thought I could shorten it, but a chalky milk sounds like it'd be something completely otherwise. So, so we'll see. That's a, that's a thing for another day. That might be a kid trip once, uh, once the little guy's old enough to kind of come with me, but that's a next summer problem, I think. So this has probably been a long video. I had a lot to put in and, uh, I hope, you know, for anyone who's watched it, I hope it's been a relaxing one. And, um, if you're in my neck of the woods and you ever want to shoot then drop me a line and maybe we'll we'll see each other out there sometime but uh this camera is so good it's a dream creation machine for what i'm doing despite the quibbles most of these issues will get ironed out in firmware it's a new camera little bugs and you know getting the autofocus stickier i think they'll fix and i think they'll fix the iso as well so um I think right now we're shooting through the toughest days of the X-H2S and it's still a total dream. So as they fix these things, it's just going to get so much better. So thanks again for all the support. This channel has been awesome. I really love getting uh, my creative juices flowing this way and uh, it's been awesome to see the support for anybody who's into it. So uh, that's it. All right, Sensor Snobs, have a good weekend and uh, or week or whatever you're doing and uh, I'll probably talk to you tomorrow.